Hey YouTube, I'm back for tutorial number two. Um, after apparently dropping a little bit of a nostalgia bomb on the few hundred people that checked out my first video. Um, so that was really cool to read your guys' comments and uh, see all those reactions, walk down memory lane a little bit. Um, but in this tutorial, we're doing something a little more abstract. We're going to be attempting to create this sort of um, abstract shape wood block effect. Um, and it's this is quite easy to do as well. It just involves a lot of um, basically moving around a landscape photo with eye warp and it's also quite a open technique right so you can have it colored and um, you can do something a little more minimalistic like this um, or if you want to really like hunker down and I'll talk about this a little later in the tutorial you can go through and try to create something like really clean like a clean looking um, abstract sketch something like this um, so it's quite a technique um, you could also like alternatively go full realism this piece was actually quite heavily inspired by a piece called I think Waiting for a Better Day by N. Keo on DeviantArt he's a great artist check him out um, except he goes like way more hardcore so like he'll he'll like do this as well but then also apply like gradients and like realism and lighting effects um, and that's really cool um, but this is just a way that you can get a general shape like this um, so with that said I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial have fun uh, learn a thing or two and uh, yeah let's go ahead and jump right in so we're first just going to be making a new canvas. I already have HD resolution set in. Uh, this is just a resolution I like because it happens to be standard for a lot of different uh, desktop wallpaper resolutions as well as um, other things and it fits quite nicely on my display here. Um, but of course it can be any resolution. Um, so just on this canvas we're going to open as layers and you can open up any landscape here. Um, I just so happen to have a landscape picture um, that I've taken myself here that I think works quite well. It has like a nice contrast between the sun and uh, where the land is covered in shadow, which results in a lot of good banding. Um, and that's what we're looking for right here, just some banding, because that's going to provide the colors for your image. Um, so let's go ahead and scale this down using the scale tool, which is shift T as a shortcut. Um, and we'll scale this down quite a bit. Let's see how that looks first. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> and we actually want to be able to manipulate the edge of the image as well. So uh, we need to go to layer, layer to image size. Um, and then filter distorts eye warp. Uh, if we didn't layer to image size, then we wouldn't have this transparency around here and we wouldn't be able to actually edit uh, the boundaries of the image. So uh, I have a general shape in mind right here. Um, the goal of what we're doing with this distortion process is we are basically using this image as um, bands of color, which we are going to draw on later or apply some kind of neat effects to. Um, so you'll sort of see how those play into it uh, relatively soon. But right now you just have a lot of creative freedom to sort of um, make this how you want it to be. I'm going to try to center it around a circle that I'm going to draw right here, um, as well as a circle that I'm sort of going to draw down here. Um, so you don't need to worry about distorting this image. Again, this is just going to become sort of like abstract, um, not too terribly important. Um, it is, you do have a lot of freedom here, like deciding the shape you want your final composition to be in. And so something like that, I think typically you do want to search for something uh, with a little bit of flow to it. With a, um, so like try to make it go from like one end to the other. Um, and do try to find those color contrasting points like this white against the blue right here or this light green against the darker green right here. Um, so I'm going to set in the circle right about over here. And I think that looks pretty good for now. Um, we'll go ahead and click OK and see how that distorts. And yeah, that distorted like quite obviously to the point where you can't necessarily see it's too much of a landscape anymore. And that is what we want. Um, and now we can go ahead and adjust the colors to this as well. So you can go color, hue saturation. You can also do this before I warp. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the effect. Um, and we're just going to ramp this saturation all the way up. Of course, it will depend on the stock image that you're using on your landscape as well. Um, I happen to like these colors. If you do want to get a little more creative, though, you can um, alternatively like play with the hue as well. I just so happen to like this combination of colors already. So we'll go ahead and make that OK. Um, and then on the background, I'm going to, um, again, this is all up to your own artistic choice, but I think I'm going to make my background a relatively light blue, something like that, and I'm going to have it fade to somewhat of a darker blue, um, but not too dark. I want it relatively desaturated as well, something like that. And I'll just take the gradient FG to BG and go ahead and 
strike it upward. And in fact, I think that might actually be a little too, let's go from like a white to a lighter blue. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's better. Not quite perfect yet though. Uh, maybe a little bit there, something like that. Perfect. I mean, of course, we'll have the uh, opportunity to adjust that later as well. I think I am going to tone this down just a little bit more in iWarp yet for the shape that I'm sort of planning. Um, again, you have a tremendous amount of freedom with what you're doing. And so I'm toning this down a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have plans to go in later and actually duplicate this shape and move it behind in order to create a little more depth. I think we're going to do that right now. So let's duplicate this layer. And this is going to create more depth. And the way we're going to be doing that then is by going colors, uh, color balance, and oops, no, colors, brightness, and contrast. And let's just tone this brightness way down um, just to start. And then let's go filters, or first let's move it. And whoops, we're not on, we're not on move the active layer. Yeah, there we go. And right, so now we have this, um, but we do want to eye warp it a little bit more to make sure it looks like more than just, you know, a, a copied layer. So go filters, distorts, eye warp one more time. And let's go ahead and try to erase the idea that this could even be the same. And you can even get your deform radius quite a bit smaller and go in and do some detailing, uh, maybe not quite that small. That's a little larger than it was. Here we are. And just something like that. Let's get rid of this guy too, because that's very recognizable. We can erase as well. Yeah, so something like that, I think, ought to work. And move this down about like that. Um, and actually, I think I want it to be a little more curved up here. So let's raise this person up right here. And then let's also move this to the edge of the canvas. Get a little bit more of the green. And move this to the edge of the canvas as well. Perfect. Okay, so I really think that's coming along, and um, yeah, will look good. Um, I might do a few more eye warp arrangements, but when we come back, we'll be ready to move on to the next portion of the tutorial. So after a whole bunch of eye warping and duplicating layers and such, this is what I ended up with. Ignore that, that was just an experiment. Um, yeah, so what I did is I duplicated this guy, I think a total of four times. I have that layer that I put behind it before, and then I did one more layer behind even that. Um, I think I might need to do something to change the depth here because you can't quite fully see the three layers like I want. I want it to like almost look as if it's going back into the distance. Um, and then I duplicated it two more times here and adjusted the color and size of the layer and moved these way off to this side and then moved this way off to this side. In addition, I erased some of this right here in order to make room for this yellow thing to make it look like it was kind of swooping out of this hill right here and kind of coming up. Um, so this is basically the general composition I want for the whole um, abstraction right now. Um, so right now, let's make a new layer and let's go ahead and make the circles. So again, holding Control and oh, holding Shift to make your circle in even size. I'm going to make the first circle about this size um, and we'll fill it in with a nice yellow, orangey type color, something like that. So make sure this is on the top layer, fill it in. Oops, and then deselect that. And we'll move this up to here, something about there. And then for the second circle, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to, again, hold shift to make sure it's about the same aspect ratio. Um, make it slightly smaller, and then I'm going to make this one purple. So let's find a nice purple color, something like that. And then we will deselect that as well and move that into place here. Um, now what I would like to do is I want... I don't want these to be like so obviously like not a part of the scene at all. 
Um, so if I reduce the opacity of this first circle layer, I can see where the scene is kind of curving around the circle. And we can see that I didn't do quite a perfect job here. So we can um, eye warp that just one more time. We want it to be overlapping a little bit, um, but at the same time, we don't want it to not follow a general curve of a sphere. So it looks like, oops, my deform radius is still a little too large. It looks like something around like that and then moving this as it's curving around the circle a little more. And this thing is going to look a little odd as well. So maybe let's move this up in general about like that. Perfect, that looks much better um, and it's much more in line with what we want. Um, so now we'll go ahead and grab the paths tool. I would suggest using the fuzzy eraser if it were not um, for something that we'll do later. Um, so now just use your paths tool in order to try to cut around where this eye warped layer is on the sphere. About like that. And then it, of course, doesn't matter what you do outside of the sphere. And then hold control to connect those. Uh, click a selection from path and then delete that part of the sphere, and then deselect that. Um, and now we can move off of the Paths tool and make this sphere 100%. And sometimes, I don't know, Gimso Opacity doesn't work. Okay, perfect. Now it really looks like it's blending in to the background, and we're going to do the same thing with this sphere over here. Um, and I already did a somewhat better job. I think I would like to move this area up a little bit still, so filters, distorts, I warp, oh, whoops, wrong layer selected. Um, that would be this layer again. Filters, distorts, I warp. And just reference the image as you're looking at it and use it as sort of like a kind of a preview. Right? GIMP doesn't necessarily support live editing like that, but you can definitely get your way around it, no problem. All right, something like that should be fine. Yeah, that's looking better. And so again, Paths tool, and then do your best to follow the curve. And you can actually smooth it with the Paths tool because you won't be able to tell uh, where, like so long as you stay inside the boundary of the dark. Because if you smooth it with the Paths tool and there's a little light poking through, it looks like it was cut off instead of it just following the natural curvature. So I think this should be all right and something like that. Perfect. And then control to connect. All right, selection from path, and let's go ahead and delete that as well. Um, you could also use a layer mask if you were worried about non-destructive editing, um, which might actually be a good idea for the future, but um, if you're doing something more advanced, but I'll talk about that later. Um, so we'll go ahead and get off of our path tool here, increase the opacity all the way here, and yeah, here you can see that it looks like it was cut out a little bit because we didn't do a good enough job. We'll just slide this over a wee bit. There, that looks fine. Um, yeah, perfect. So now we have the two spheres really interacting uh, with the wave. And I would like to maybe have like some other thing right here. It's not quite nestled quite as firmly as I would like. And alternatively, you could even try, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this, um, but just for your own devices, you could even try making the sphere in between these layers right here. So um, something like that. And that's not even too bad at all, actually. I think I might keep that for now. I don't know. It looks much less like a sphere and much more. Um, anyway, you can experiment with it. Um, I think for now, I'll go ahead and keep that. Uh, the cut's not the best, but that's fine. So now we get to the point in the tutorial uh, where you have to make a decision. And that decision is, are you going to uh, make it look relatively nice or are you going to be happy with this result? Because what's happening right now or what we're going to do, um, be doing is, um, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this for now, but I'll show you what you can accomplish if you go in and actually take the time in order to make this like a relatively cool piece of artwork. Um, you have a few varying options you can do here. Um, so the first, let's just go ahead and do the easiest option right now. And that would be uh, layer new from visible. And then we'll go filters, edge detect, edge. 
And I think default settings should suit our purposes just fine. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then we're going to desaturate this. So colors, uh, desaturate. And then we're going to invert this. I mean, you can also keep this and mess around with the colors. Um, the actual, I think it's already a pretty cool effect. Um, but what we're, what I'm going to plan to do then, um, you have so many options where you can branch off from this tutorial and make your own general thing with like eye warping a landscape. I think it's a really cool technique. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and invert this. And right now this actually sort of reminds me of uh, Radiohead's new album, a, uh, a moon-shaped pool. It looks a lot like its album artwork. It's not as dark, obviously. Um, so you can keep it like this. It, it looks like a really cool, like, sketched out drawing. And since we kept all of our lines clean, this is the reason we use the path tool instead of the fuzzy eraser. Um, it looks just like a very high quality sketch drawing. So that's definitely something cool that you can take away from this as well. Um, but if you want to preserve your colors, then you can set the layer mode on darken only. And uh, that like, res like, it makes it look like it's outlined, like a sketch. Um, and because the colors we're using here are a little dark, uh, it doesn't fully, uh, you know, capture the thing. Um, so you could also try out other, other layer modes, um, such as overlay. But again, if you overlaid, you might want to reduce uh, colors, brightness, contrast. You might want to reduce the brightness quite a bit. Um, and then contrast to really pull those lines out. So something like that. And that almost makes it look um, a little bit like, uh, sort of like those early Asian drawings almost, uh, the early Asian paintings. Um, and I don't know, something like this I think is an effect that looks really cool. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to take this a little farther, you could go and worry about dressing these spheres up. So you could add some lighting effects to them. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, you can just see the difference that that edge detect makes. It makes it look a whole lot more lively, a whole lot more high quality, I think, as well. Um, and if you really wanted to go with the sketch effect, I would actually get rid of the gradiented background as well. I would just maybe make it like a parchment color background, something like this. Um, oops, something like this, and then turn that back on. Um, and then that maybe looks a little bit more like the parchment you're um, going for. Um, but if we wanted to dress up the spheres a little bit, we could do that by alpha to selectioning, uh, going like that, um, and then just applying some general like lighting effects to the spheres. Um, so first, maybe a shadow, right, and then uh, select shrink and shrink it by maybe 15 pixels or something. And then, oops, we want to make that shadow on a new layer. And then shrinking it by. And this is the point where you would want to use a layer mask instead of actually cutting it, because what happens right here is that when we delete it, and actually that looks fine like in the context of the sketch if you want to make the spheres maybe a little thicker outlined. Um, but now if we alpha to selection this layer one more time and then apply a blur here in order to make it look like this has a little bit of a shadow going on and really bring out the 3D aspect or the 3D quality of the sphere. Um, and then like you would also probably do something like this. And this is just like very, very rough we could definitely do it better if we were spending a long time on this, which definitely feel free to do. Um, and then you'd like maybe pull a gradient down like this. And go like that. And actually we can just manually erase the parts that don't look natural, so... Yeah, something like that and maybe set this on overlay. I'm getting carried away here, but, um, and then also we can do a few more things just to add to the effect of the sphere. If we go ahead and make our gradient a radial gradient and from the bottom stroke up about like that, then also set that on overlay. Maybe tone it down like a wee bit. And then if we want to make the shadows um, still a little bit darker, you can even go in with a large fuzzy brush um, on a new layer. You always want to make new layers when you're applying new effects to this, um, because if you do not make a new layer, then you lose a lot of control 
over the blending options and such of the effects that you want. So let's go ahead and make this edge a little bit darker over here as well. Maybe. Okay, and then maybe set this as overlay as well, and then reduce that opacity as well. Yeah, so something like that. And then if we were to reapply these effects, um, you would catch, in addition to all of this sketch effect, um, so let's actually just reapply these effects one more time so you can see sort of an example of, of what you could do. You could go uh, filter, oh, first layer, new from visible, filters, edge detect, edge, colors, desaturate, colors, Invert, overlay, colors, bring some contrast, bring this way down, contrast way up, not that far up, something like that. And you can see that the, the 3D effect of the sphere is captured with that as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we're doing. Um, the other option that you can do, um, one that I did when I was first making this tutorial, is let me go ahead and open it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and keep this. This was the first result I had with the tutorial. And what I ended up doing here is I used the edge detect as well. Um, but, so instead of going this, because this looks a little bit unfinished, and I chose also not to make this sphere relatively glossy, I used the paths tool instead. And this is tremendously time intensive, so if you guys want to, I'm not going to do it for the purposes of, the, of this tutorial, just because it takes like hours. Um, but if you're really dedicated to it, and you're all about that kind of life, um, you literally go around every single curve that you've made, and you make it smoother. Um, so you you actually like fill in the shape and then you fill it in with a sample of the color. Um, so like, I don't know, this isn't a very good example, but let's just say this is my shape. I would then uh, make a selection from this path, make a new layer, um, sample roughly what the color around ought to be. So in this case, maybe something like this. And then I would fill in that path. And then I would do that for every single path. And in addition to every single path, I would also go in and fill some of the larger detailed spaces like this. Um, and then at the very end, you would still do that same edge detect um, and use that sort of effect in order to make it look a little bit more like a drawing. So that's what I did for this one, um, but it took quite a long time. But if that's your thing, um, I definitely like recommend just putting on some good music um, and then just like jamming through it for a few hours. Uh, that's what I really enjoyed. But yeah, this is just a technique that's really awesome um, for creating these sort of abstract, uh, I don't know, sort of 3D looking type figures, uh, basically just distorting a landscape and applying a lot of really cool effects to it. Um, yeah, so I hope you learned something in this tutorial. I hope you guys had fun. Definitely leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And um, yeah, thanks. Until next time, I should be uploading a tutorial tomorrow. All right, until then.